So we are here with the legend that is Tim Hartley. That's very kind, Richard. Thank oh, you. You're very welcome. Tim um, is uh, one of my great hair heroes, and um, he's kindly come in to to do some a couple of haircuts that you can watch online on Seiko Hair Online, and um, we've just stolen a couple of minutes just to ask him a couple of questions. So there, there are so many things I'd like to ask you. Go ahead. Um, but let's start with why you became a hairdresser. Everybody's why I became a hairdresser I th um, is, is, is there's a number of reasons. I mean, I wanted to be a pop star or a um, you know or a great artist or a movie star, whatever. Um, but I totally got captivated by fashion and music when I was a kid at school. And at that time, it was all about the mod thing. And of course, Vidal Sassoon was creating these amazing, yeah. extraordinary haircuts. And um, so right from the word go, I wanted to cut hair, not actually bend hair. Um, I, wanted, okay. I didn't want to be a hair bender, I wanted to be a hair cutter. <laughs> um, so originally, I trained as a barber. Um, but I think it was very much about that kind of mod era and the, these extraordinarily, um, you know, linear haircuts that mm. were, were out then. And that's something you've, you've been doing today. Is, is a little, bit, yeah, I think a little bit. bit. We, um, you know, tend to sort of. I, I think that that look is in my heart, mm. in a way. Yeah. So I think it's always going to be a little bit at the, the core of you know what I do. Yeah. Or hopefully, it remains that. So how long have you been hairdressing? I've been hairdressing an horribly long time. Uh, well, I, I started, um, at the, I guess, at the end of the 60s. Yeah. Um, and I did uh, an apprenticeship in the 70s and, um, you know, became a stylist. Um, so as I, as I say, I trained as a barber, I had a fantastic teacher. Mm. And at that time, it was trendy to, you know, unisex was okay. only, yeah. not only a fashion, it was a hair fashion and it was also a concept for yeah. salons yeah. and um, so after I did my uh, apprenticeship then I actually worked for a short time in a, in a, a unisex uh, salon as it were yeah. and uh, but of course you know I wanted to go to Sassoon because the, I really wanted um, you know to learn how to cut hair properly I, I think I could cut hair mm. but I didn't really have uh, you know the technique that I wanted at that time so how how's it how's everything changed since you began to now kind of the good, the bad and the, the ugly? Well, it's amazing. I think that, um, you know, the fashion cycle is, is alive and well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, without a doubt, references, um, you know, from certainly in the, you know, my time frame, uh, definitely reoccurring. And, and that's a great thing in a way, because uh, the look and the references are similar, but they are actually, you know, quite different because, mm -hmm. you know, hair, Cutting techniques have, have developed, and you know I think that we have a lot more power at our fingertips today yeah. than we actually had. I think everything was very simplistic and really quite naive, uh, you know, back in the yeah. day. Whereas today we have <laughs> a dog barking. <laughs> um, you know, I think the difference today is that you, also we have the technology of products. Mm. Which, yeah, you know, I mean, if we only go back as far as the 80s, um, you know, for punk hairstyles, you had to rely on soap and water or, you know, there, there weren't uh, actually hair products. I mean, yeah. we used to use hair yeah. lacquer uh, on wet hair and then blast it with the hairdryer yeah. or, you know, soap and water. Um, it was very dip sugar and water, mm. you know, things which would actually, you know, make the hair you know, it would make the hair vertical. Yeah. Um, you know, there wasn't really stuff around uh, to be able to do that. And I remember if you wanted like a slick look, we used to have to go to Boots the Chemist and buy KY Jelly, um, which looked amazing when it went on. But as you know, it, it, it used to sort of flake and it wasn't really all that effective. Um, you know, so Brill Cream, black and white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, Brooklyn was, was invented in the 1950s. So, you know, we take a lot of these things for granted today. And, you know, the 80s wasn't that long ago. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's incredible, you know, the technology that there is with products now. So that's changed a lot. Um, so that's the good. That's the good. The bad, I think, is that the client today 
um, I think we've gone, we've tended to go a little bit backwards, mm. and um, there isn't the, quite the uh, respect for the professionalism of the hairdresser. Um, I think it, it's not quite as in place as it was, um, because it's considered to be a, ma a mere service by a lot of clients today, and the and the power of the blow dry has kind of taken um, you know too much of a of a high profile, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And um, so anybody with any old sort of rotten hair, uh, you know, I mean, I've seen very expensive ladies, you know, with fabulous shoes and bags and clothing, and they probably on their heads have got about this much good hair, and the rest of it is is, is absolutely kaput, with uh, over. It's overprocessed and over blow dried, mm. and I think that that's very sad. There will be another uh, backlash against that because it is yeah. part of the, you know, the fashion cycle, and I think that particularly that kind of look is terribly aging, and you know, it's not really as expensive, you know, as people uh, uh, perceive it to be. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that there will be a return to, um, you know, the natural quality of hair and. Uh, you know, really looking at the way that hair reacts to a great haircut, yeah. you know, in a yeah. natural way, is far more modern. It's always going to be more modern yeah. because it was, it, it's always been an ideal. It's like fantastic design in anything is a, is an ideal and I, an, yeah. an idealistic, um, you know, view of something, and that has to return because what we all have naturally is is best, mm. you know, in, in many respects. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I and I do believe that it's great. It's a great thing to be able to enhance what we have, you know, naturally. And I'm not saying that you know we have to just be completely, you know, purist. I think there's a place for everything. Um, but I do see that as being a future trend. I can see it happening uh, in in many respects. I think some hairdressers, um, you know, I think we're becoming more fashionable. You know, the purist hairdresser, the hair cutter. Yeah. I think is. Um, it, 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 you know, it's a highly valued um, concept, which is, is coming back into fashion. Yeah. Um, and it's not just going to be about the big blow dry and the power yeah. blow dry and expensive looking hair. Um, I think there are many different ways to look, you know, your personal best. And um, quite frankly, you know, the majority of people need help. You know, yeah. to find the way that they look beautiful and to find the way to have their maximum, optimum, yeah. you know, best look. It's a need. Yeah, in a, a way, experience. because it's a little bit like trends. You know, I think that we can, uh, you know, trends are fun and they can teach people how to dress in a way. You know, young people mm -hmm. don't necessarily always know what's going to necessarily suit them. Um, but I think trends can help people to experiment when they're young. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I also believe that in hair. Because, you know, I mean, at one stage it was, you know, to, if you were a cool person, you would actually 